Hi friends, it's Jess with R Bipolar. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, just a little bit about me. I have bipolar one. I was diagnosed 24 years ago when I was a sophomore in college. And we're back with my friend Moss. Hello. I love your lithium mine. That's Thank awesome. Thank you. Yes. Just we're here there, to there's... talk about lithium. Look at, oh, I love your background. So we've already done one video together, and now we're back to talk about lithium. Uh, we actually both take lithium. And so, and my friend Moss, if you didn't see the other video, she has bipolar, not otherwise specified with psychosis. Um, my diagnosis is just bipolar one, but it's also with psychosis. So, hello. <laughs> Lucky <Lydia. laughs> So, so where, where do you want to start? Well, do you take lithium as a bedtime med? I do. I take it at med? bedtime. Yeah. Well, I feel like lithium is always like a hot topic, like within the bipolar community, with bipolar patients, people who have bipolar, um, as well as like the general public. Mm -hmm. um, when I went looking for this background, all I typed was lithium art. And I was like, I love every single thing I'm looking at. <laughs> it's so ubiquitous, like in the culture, songs and art, like there was so much. Um, right. So I thought maybe give it a shout out since it was a bedtime med. And um, you, if I remember correctly, have been on lithium therapy for quite some time. It's new for me, not yet mm -hmm. a year. Um, how did, I've how done did it. You I've been on it uh, 14, 15 years. Mm -hmm. and oh, and we had, uh, we had briefly talked about some people are genetically responsive and others just are not. Yes. And we just you know happen to be, that? what's that? Do you know more about that? That's like all I know. All I know. No, I don't know that much about it, but all I know is roughly a third of people with bipolar do respond well to lithium and the other two thirds don't. And, you know, of course there are other drugs that they may respond better to than us. I know for the first 10 years before I got on lithium, I did very poorly on the medication I was on. So this was sort of like a miracle for me. I mean, it's not a miracle. I still have to work really hard to stay well. I still, I take other medications for bipolar. Um, I do a lot of things like lifestyle wise to stay well. So it's true. I mean, enough that we decided to do this. <laughs> I mean, it's miraculous enough. Um, yeah, I, I will be 46 in a few days. I was diagnosed age 21, 22, somewhere around there and tried the pharmacopoeia. You know, like everything and never had good symptom management, really just gave up on medication therapies altogether. I was done with being experimented with mm -hmm. um, and I never tried lithium because uh, like the bad rap that I had heard of it and its toxicity and long term effects. So I just had not tried it and refused to. And uh, had a very bad symptom episode last year. I voluntarily went to the hospital and I said, you know, it's the only thing I haven't tried yet. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. Tried it and it worked. And it's it has been just short of miraculous. I mean, the, the immediate, yeah. it brought mania immediately under control. It brought rapid cycling immediately under control. Went a very tiny dose very medication sensitive. I had trouble with the side effects at first. It's and we've talked it. about like, we both are medication sensitive, but you are much more sensitive than me. Like I'm currently taking 600 milligrams of lithium, which is a small dose compared to most people. I think the average dose is around 900 milligrams, oh. but I know you're taking nowhere near that. <laughs> I, I am prescribed 150 twice a day. I take 150 once a day, most days. It's written that way for the times that I do need the extra dose. Like if hypomania or mania is coming on, I can take the additional okay. dose. Yeah. Um, yeah. Teeny tiny dose, but at, and I can't at 300, one pill once a day 
I, I already reach toxic side effects, which the side effects have a bad rap for a good reason. They're bad. I agree. I agree. Yes. I haven't experienced them personally, but I know, I know you have some experience with that, unfortunately. Yeah. <sighs> um, but if you know what they are, you know what to look for and can ha- get access to proper medical care should they arise. Had a little snafu there, but that's due to where I live. Um, it doesn't, you, you can quickly recover from them caught early enough. I know that there are some long-term though, things that can be permanent, like kidney damage, um, increased yes. risk of, is it, is it one of the drugs that there's an increased risk for like Alzheimer's and dementia? No, it definitely lithium, comes with some brain fog. It does, but lithium actually for like dementia and Alzheimer's, it helps repair oh, the brain. That's right. Yeah. This is the one way we're actually doing something good for our brain is by taking lithium. I know in the meantime, we have trouble, well, at least I do with word recall. Like the other day, you know, I wasn't feeling well. I was sort of on the brink of hypomania and I met, I just happened to come across my friend in the park and I could not remember the street I used to live on. And it was pretty excruciating. And I actually could not remember it to the point where after I left her, it was embarrassing too. And after I left her, I had to look it up. I really couldn't. I lived there for four years. So that can be something. I know brain fog can happen. You can have trouble with concentration. You're right, though. I do remember reading that it is neuroprotective, actually. That's the right word. Yeah. And that's how it helps you with dementia and Alzheimer's, which also runs in my family. So I'm hoping that bipolar is leading me in a good direction in one way. Um, Me too. I I have other medications that have an increased risk for it. And so I'm like, oh, maybe they're balancing each other out. What about for you? Um, I want to say two things that either... One is something others have noticed it as a change in me. And one is a change that I have noticed. Um, friends and family have just said to me in general, you're doing well, you seem like you, you seem like happy you, as opposed to these are people I've known long-term who have seen manic me, like, so they know the difference. Right. Um, whereas there's a lot of psychotropics that I've been on or psych um, medication therapies where you're not yourself anymore. Yes. And so friends and family have noticed that even when I didn't, I'm like, oh, I'm just normal, euthymic. I just am not able to recognize it. And what I did recognize was impulse control. Um, And I know that the drug is also, or the mineral, the element, the essential salt. It's a salt, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, the salt Um, line. (laughs) How it affects the like neurological system, um, essential salt. Dang, I always lose my train of thought on these videos. No, what I oh, what I noticed was it was impulse control, and the drug is listed as being protective of um, suicidation, suicidal thinking, and acting on suicide. And as a person who has struggled with that symptom expression off and on, I noticed that change with lithium that it just dropped off as a symptom and my impulse control to skyrocketed. I don't know if I noticed a big change. Well, I too, you know, have definitely had suicidal ideation. I think I still have it here and there, but maybe it is more controlled. So, But I'm not quite sure. I mean, I know before I was on lithium, it was much worse. So there you go. It's probably it. Impulse control. I mean, I'm not having full-blown mania anymore. So maybe (laughs) right there. (laughs) Impulse control. I I mean, outside of like episodes, like other things like, you know, just, you know, not from small things, like not automatically reaching for a phone or, you know, not going for a snack when you're bored, these little kind of impulse control things also. Oh, no, I don't think that is uh, presenting with me. I think I still have a lot of that impulsivity in that way. Yeah, I would like well, to I still have, have it. 
I still have it. I just noticed the drop. I mean, probably but you about- also, you know, you've just recently gone on lithium and been able to see the change. It's been a long time for me. So I, I really am not sure. And I was so out of, con- like, honestly, I was so out of control before I got on lithium. I think, you know, the medication I was taking was exacerbating my symptoms. So I was really a mess. So I, everything is better, but I don't know if it was, you know, the impulse control specifically is better. Well, if it's working, don't fix it. Like, what is that? If it's not broke, don't fix it. Yeah. It's working. I know I'm, you're really pressed for time and you have yeah. an engagement. I still have some time. Okay. What else would you like to say or ask about lithium? Well, I know a lot of people are afraid of taking lithium because well, the toxicity, but also like having to do all the lab work. Mm, And so how do you feel about that? I mean, how often are you having to go at this one? Cause you're still kind of early on. Mm -hmm. Um, How often are you doing all of that? Um, I have to go for the lab work frequently. I did have problems with this because due to another medical condition, I have fragile veins and I had trouble getting a provider who could do the draws without causing me harm, but we've got it. Um, I have the testing every three months because I'm at such a low dose. It's at, we're having actually a hard time even detecting it. Right. Um, Cause you got to get it within the window. Um, also because of other medications I take, we have to be a little more careful with the various blood levels. So that that's makes why sense. take it, but- I take the levels approved every three months. I mean, I think every three months is probably pretty average. I think I do every three months, like when I'm doing it right, but sometimes it's a little more, I'm like maybe every four or five at times, but like you, like my levels are not always in the therapeutic range, but it's therapeutic for me. Um, And like we talked about just a little bit, um, possible kidney damage that's one reason I did lower my lithium. I used to take 750 milligrams. Now I take 600 because it was like my kidney function was deteriorating like ever so slightly. And it was starting to become a little bit of a concern. Not that I would need to get off lithium right now, but possibility for the future. And it's still, you know, still out there. And I'm kind of scared to death that I would have to get off lithium. So, um, we do monitor my lab work a little more just because of my kidney function checking on that. And I've had to do the glorious, like 24 hour creatinine clearance, the collection for 24 hours. That's um, really not fun, Mm -hmm. but it showed, it actually showed much more of how my kidneys were actually doing than the the blood work. And Mm. it showed that my kidneys were doing a little better than the blood work was showing. So that was a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So is that like, so is that like a uh, decision you've gone ahead and made that you're weighing these future risks that you know that there's a point where you're going to go off the lithium treatment as opposed to uh, maybe doing something more intervention toward the kidneys? Do, do you, well, do yeah. That? So we're doing all the testing to see if we need intervention for the kidneys and when that needs to start, like going to see a nephrologist, possibly getting on, I don't know, diuretics, things like that. Right now, I don't need to do that. I'm doing well enough that I don't need it, but I can only imagine there's going to come a day when we have to do all of that. And That's one reason we lowered the lithium because I used to take 600 earlier on. And at some point we, I think I was going on a vacation and I was really nervous and we upped my lithium to 750 and then just sort of like kept it there because it still wasn't a high dose. But at this point we like are trying to do whatever we can to stay on the lithium, but, you know, lower it and just really monitor everything. But I know people who we're on lithium for only like 10 years, 12 years, and they're having much more trouble than I am. So I I think it's a really personal thing. And yeah, of course. So I I'm, I'm very grateful that I've been on lithium this long and haven't had as much trouble. That is really great success. Yeah. That's nice to hear. Gives me some hope. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, you're doing great. Right. And you're on a low, you're on an extremely low dose. So and started so late in life. Maybe I can just I'll, I can run with it to the end. Just ride it's- it out. I think it's possible, especially if you're taking like 150 most of the time. I mean, that's that's a nice dose to uh not have troubles with it, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what else? What else? So, about is that, so that is that really the only side effect that you're just dealing and just have long term side effects and really nothing, none mm-hmm. of the toxic immediate things. No, the only other thing that I have besides like the word recall is getting worse over time for me. Um, and that to me is hard because like with my job, I do a lot of like meetings and speaking in meetings. And I'm all, I, it's never happened, but I'm always so worried that I'm just going to like totally lose my train of thought or I, like, I won't be able to place, you know, a certain word and I'll just get, you know, I'll stumble. Um, the other thing is I do have a bit of like a tick, I guess you would call it once in a while, <laughs> like a little like jerk. Mm-hmm. And it's not often, it, it might be like once a day, something like that. Um, I don't think, you know, I think other people might notice it once in a while, but it's not really a big deal, but that's, that's what I've noticed over time. The other, you know, the side effects I had initially, like within the first few months of taking lithium, those all went away. Like, I think I had like acne, like acne was worse. I had like a tremor trying to remember what other side effects I had initially. I think those were like the two big ones. I still have the little hand tremor, but it uh, fades. So it's like, depends on if I'm awake. <laughs> depends on how, <laughs> like, I take the medication before I sleep. But if I wake up early enough, I'll still have the tremor. If I oh. sleep in, then I won't have it by the time I wake. Like, it fades. Okay. Um, yeah, that has been really about the only thing once I found the right therapeutic dosage level. Right. Well, that's, so it, yeah. that's the I key. wonder if... And we'll have to get back to this. I'll go down the rabbit hole and look it up. I wonder if there's a correlation between responsiveness therapeutically and side effects. Like maybe those who it, they're not as therapeutic responsive have more side effects. Possibly. One thing I know a lot of people do have, I didn't experience this, but um, weight gain. People do experience weight gain on lithium. I have experienced weight gain from other medications <laughs> Be- and I know it was from other medications because they were added much later, but I had, I never really experienced weight gain on lithium. Um, but some people I do. Haven't either. I've actually lost a, t- a smidge. Okay. From that, from that, imp- from that, like the, not the snack impulse control, impulse control. Um, yeah. Yeah. Huh? But, and uh, I had heavy sleepiness at first. Um, but got used to it. You know, I think I did too. And I think it does still help me sleep. I take it and then I do, you know, kind of my routine, my reading before I go to bed. And I think having that like little bit of time, I think it does help me sleep. Um, But overall though, I am a champion of lithium. If someone's willing to take the risk, because it does have high risk. It does, but you know, sometimes, you know, and you're responsive to it. It can work. Oh, I mean, I just encourage anyone in general, if your medication isn't working for you, talk to whoever you're getting your medication from and ask to try something different yes. or take a break if you need to. Don't be like me. Like the first 10 years in the diagnosis, I was on a medication that was really not working for me. And no one ever took me off of it. They just kept adding things, you know, like, like, oh, just keep adding something else. And um, yeah, that did not work for me. And I'm very lucky that, you know, I just finally tried another doctor and they were like, why are you taking this? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> but yeah, I totally agree with you. You need to always try to speak up. And if something's not working, you should not have to stay on it. I mean, you give it a chance, you give every medication a chance, give it a fair shake. And that's it. But just because you have a mental health diagnosis doesn't mean you've lost your autonomy. Well, it could. 
<laughs> God, <laughs> that's another conversation. <laughs> All right. You enjoy the rest of your weekend. You too. And thank you so much for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.